I'm here in the fruit market at Tectonics Glasgow with Justin Broderick. Justin, last time we met, I don't know whether you remember, but I came to your house in Church Stretton. We went down into the studio and you were going to give me a guitar lesson. I strapped on your big black Fender, struck it once, an amazing power chord, <laughs> and it, the amp blew up. I, I, I still don't absolutely recollect the moment, but I've still got the interview on a cassette tape. From the programme. It yeah, was a series yeah. called Cacophony That's Now. Right. And I think I recorded not only my show, but a couple of other people, because there was a few of the people you interviewed who I was into and, and so on. But um, I don't look after my equipment anyway. I've always been uh, quite, uh, quite punk about my equipment. I never so you're not going to give it. me a big bill for the hour? No, that's it. Yeah, no, 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 not yet. I'll wait till I'm really poor. And then you can bill me. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I remember about your house was your record collection. And we talked about... British electroacoustic composers, John T. Harris and Dennis Smalley, Trevor Wishart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you used to go to concerts by Beast, the Birmingham yeah, Electroacoustic exactly. Sound Theatre at yeah, Mac in yeah, Birmingham. Yeah. What impact did that music have on your work? It wasn't only English, of course. There were, you had Stockhausen and Arkis, yeah, modernist yeah. music. Yeah. What impact has that music had on your work as a guitarist? I think what it taught me about being essentially me coming from a punk background being a punk guitarist, you know, my beginnings were with Napalm Death, um, living on a council estate, discovering punk through my parents. It, it would be sort of assumed that people like me wouldn't normally discover music because there's a class issue, I, 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 you know, I, and even when I first discovered a lot of that music, there appeared to be a class issue, which obviously I completely bypassed because it's just music to me. But what it taught me as a guitarist was about texture. And what I realised was as a, as a punk guitarist, in something like Napalm Death, writing five second songs, etc. It wasn't just about how many chords you could cram in in five seconds. It was about the attack, the blast, the impact. It, it bypassed technicality for me. Now, which is again a contradiction because obviously electroacoustic music can sometimes be all about technicality, maybe arguably, but I don't hear it as such. It's the sound, isn't it? Yeah, it's the pure sound. sound, pure texture and the capturing of this uh, almost uh, another world, you know. And if you think about it, also electricity. I'm thinking the electroacoustic music, you need loudspeakers, you need yeah. electricity. Yeah. You need electricity. Absolutely. And for me, that in there's an intensity, there's a relationship between something that's almost teeth-grittingly intense and it, electricity seems to be the key component. Like, fundamentally, it's electricity. Like, like we were saying, blowing my guitar amp, you know, it was blowing valves in it and it's all about those valves it's about those tubes when it's just pure digital or something which i still use i mean i'm not some purist at all i mean i use and abuse everything and literally i abuse it more than use it that's that's a fact but there is something about heat that i often hear in sound and that's something even what i'm doing tonight here in in the old fruit market is essentially about guitar heat but also about coldness, there's something about cold as well, but it's about, there's something about the temperature that fascinates me in sound. So the last time I saw you, it's quite a long time ago when I blew yeah, up your Yeah, I, th I think... Like Probably the end of the 90s, 16, I think. 16, 17 years. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a while since I've seen you. You've said a little bit about tonight. Can you say a bit more about what it is you're going to do? Have you, I mean, have you planned what you're going to do? Is it improvised? It's do you have a score? Do you have a diagram? Do you have something to give you a clue? It's all... Um, the diagrams are completely Im imaginary to some extent. Everything I do is always imagined, visualised somewhat, and then eventually I, I did rehearse what I'm doing, but I couldn't satisfactorily get the volume of the amps. So again, there is a lot of improvisation to it. And again, it's, about, it's, it's literally about me using volume and feedback. Um, and that's about the space, isn't it? We're here yeah, in the yeah, fruit Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what you're performing tonight, if you did it some, in another space, it wouldn't sound the same. It, it, absolutely. If, if it was in a very, very tiny, compact, 100 capacity venue, I'd have to utilise that environment more, which would be arguably more suffocating, possibly, which is, a, in my book, is a great thing. Uh, I mean, my music isn't about, there is, there is, obviously, I mean, for me, my music is about, there's a lot of violence to it, there's a lot of a, a sense of attack and defence. For me, it's mostly about defence. And there's some sort of very twisted, beautiful, ugly thing going on as well. 